You know, I, I want to share before uh, we read the scripture. Let me ask, what is your natural reaction to hearing, do not let your hearts be troubled or don't be afraid? I, I, I saw at least one reaction is, whoa, I'm going to grab onto my seat because I think something's coming that I don't want to hear. Uh, I want you to think as Jesus was speaking today's scripture lesson that uh, the following of followers of Jesus had been with Jesus three years. And this year, they come to Passover in Jerusalem. The disciples have been with a great teacher, prophet, and a healer. One they hoped be the Messiah. What do you think their expectations were? And then consider hearing what Jesus has to say. From John, in the 14th chapter of the Gospel, from the first verse through the 21st. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. Would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, that I will come again and take you to myself. So where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going or how, or how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if my name, in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to uh, be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. 
You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while and the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. And they who have uh, my commandments will keep those who are love, love me, and uh, the lo- who love me will love my Father, and I will Uh, love them, reveal them to myself. May God bless to us the reading of his word, its understanding, and its application in the days ahead. The word of God. Before I remembered where I was. (laughs) The followers of Jesus had been with Jesus three years, and Uh, this year they went to Jerusalem for Passover. I think they went with great expectation. I know many of the crowd did. Jesus is and was a great teacher, prophet, and healer. But Jesus didn't take up the power in the way they thought he would. He didn't go against Rome and claim to be king of the Jews as displayed over his head upon the cross. He didn't display himself as the victorious Messiah as others had anticipated. I reiterate those phrases that I gave you earlier Do not be afraid or do not let your hearts be troubled. You and I, like the Hebrews of old, like the disciples of the early church, and since that we continue to discover God in Jesus Christ, and our following him leads us to a deeper faith in the way of life, that we, at times, do not anticipate. You see, they had expectations and they weren't fully hearing what Jesus was saying. What did Peter uh, respond to Jesus uh, for telling of him, denying him, denying Jesus three times? Oh, no. If all the others fall away, not me. But Jesus not only foretold Peter's denial, but he also uh, quoted Zechariah uh, in Zechariah 13, 7. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. They did, in fact. Uh, when Jesus was struck down or crucified, they did uh, go and hide themselves, scattered around Jerusalem or wherever. But he had also said, after I am raised up, I will go before you uh, to Galilee. Jesus was and is trying to teach his followers to walk in faith. That includes admitting that today we don't always know or understand God's ways. I think in the church it's often hard. I have known uh, Singers who did not want to sing in church, especially a solo, because they felt like they should be perfect. 
I know people who don't want to read the scripture lesson unless they've looked at the passage and know that there's not words that they're afraid to pronounce or say or if they're going to be asked to uh, uh, tell what you understand about it. I once asked a person to go with me for prayer and anointing and of someone who was uh, gravely sick. And she said, oh, no, you don't want me because, you know, I don't know if I had the strength and the spirit to do that. And I asked her, well, if you went, what would you do? Would you rely on God? Oh, yes, because I can't. I, I don't know if I can do it. I'm, I'm afraid that I'll fall short. I said, well, then, of course you're the person I want. I don't want a person who goes and thinks that they have the strength to change somebody's healing. Unless they do. I'd rather have a group of people go and we're relying before we go, we even pray that God goes with us. And on the day that we were to go, word was that the girl who was in the hospital wasn't feeling good. So should we go or should we stay? We decided that we would go and we'd stand outside the room if we had to. She had an illness where uh, an infection on one side of her brain was going to overtake it and the course of action would be to sever the, uh, at the spinal cord uh, that portion of the brain before it got to the other side. But when they got to the Cleveland Clinic, where they were going to do the operation. It had been delayed because Mayo had lost their doctor who did that type of surgery. It was discovered that uh, the infection was in two spots on the good side of the brain. But they decided to go ahead and do the surgery. Well, when we were at the University of Iowa Clinic, the mom knew that we were outside of the area, and so she called us in. And as others would visit with uh, Angie, I would anoint the daughter, and some of us would pray for her. And when they went to Cleveland and they did the surgery, seeing the other two globes, they said, well, we'll do the best we can. It's not very hopeful, but we'll do the best we can. A month after the surgery, she went to Mayo, who could uh, check and see about the infections. Well, one section was all but gone of part of the infection, and the other one was smaller. And the doctor said, well, that can't be. I want you to come back in a month and we're going to have to take that test over again. It must have gotten mixed up with something. But we have to verify because I expect that that infection is there. So Angie and her husband uh, came to me uh, and they were going up to Mayo again. And I had just finished the funeral service. Would I take time to pray with them? And I called one of my elders aside and said, yeah, let's do that. And this time, not only was that one part completely gone, the other part was almost gone. You know, healing stuff like that don't often happen. But it was happening. And that three-year-old girl is now somewhere around 18 or 19. She dumbfounded the people who did her therapy. I uh, was getting therapy for another condition a lot less 
Uh, and they would actually delight to see her coming in because she would outperform their expectation each time. Her good brain was learning the things that the other brain should do. She's not a perfect child, but that's okay because I haven't seen too many perfect children. But what I'm coming to say is it's okay to share our doubts and our fears, to say, hey, Jesus, <coughs> you say I know the way, but I don't. I don't even know where you're going. How can I know the way to the place? You say, you and the Father are one. Show me the Father, and I'll believe. Sometimes it takes time to understand what Jesus is saying. Sometimes we will scatter in fear, or we will have doubts. But hopefully, we won't give up. We will stay with God And trust in faith when we don't fully understand. Anybody have a great insight as far as what we should do in Ukraine? Should we now be involved in World War III or not, or this or that? I don't know. Sure, glad I'm not the president or uh, someone deciding. I feel for the people of Ukraine. And I pray against what is happening from Russia and Putin. But for you and me, we can just we work on where we are. We can write to the president or their senator or congressman or this or that. And it's not only the one issue, but there's many issues. Kids are heavy burdened. If one of the things that you can do as a parent or a grandparent could be to comfort your kids and saying, you know, I don't know everything, but I trust God. And to share about some of the places that you have walked through. Have you ever had a day that, oh, I'm not going to get through today? But you found yourself on the other side? You did get through? Did you take that as a confirmation that God's walking with you? I believe he is. And God has given us the strength we need for today. He's helping us. In Christianity, Presbyterians and Reformed Church are different than many of the others. We don't concentrate on giving up something for Lent. It's not that it's a bad discipline, but for Calvin and John Knox and for us down the generations, it has become a time to be honest with God and to grow in faith where we're not already. To draw and get come closer to Jesus this Easter than we were last Easter. To identify some things in us that are weak or sick. We often refer to the church as like a hospital for those who are spiritually sick. Have you ever heard that? Um, but uh, it is. We are in a place where people should be allowed to be imperfect. You know, if you find a word or name that you don't understand in the Bible, say that person or uh, this place. You can go on the computer and uh, ask them to pronounce the word 
phonically for you. But I'll tell you, experts don't always agree on how it's pronounced. Do you know that some of us believers may carry a grudge against God for what God didn't do our way as we expected or as I have asked I thought God would you know, like to hear from me and me tell him how I want it because then he would know the way. Well, he already knew the way. And it may not have been the same as mine. But we might as well be honest about it with God because Jesus already knows what we're thinking in our heart. Jesus was telling them, I'm going to prepare a place for you. They're not expecting his arrest and crucifixion. They're expecting that the Messiah is going to come, hopefully this weekend. He was telling them, I'm going to prepare a place for them. We call that place heaven. And it's good to know that it's there. Because that means I can freely live and trust in Jesus. So even if I fall short, like Thomas and Philip, be bold enough to let him know, we don't know fully what you're talking about. Philip and Thomas did the uh, scatter like the others. Peter did uh, deny Jesus. But you know, after the resurrection, they came back together and they held together and they've changed the world. The gospel has gone around the world. Not everybody believes in Jesus, but a lot more people know about him. And hopefully someday they allow him into their life. I hate to tell Putin, but those churches that you helped to identify the classic uh, Moscow scene, they were there before him and they will be there after him. Because the faith he has never been able to kill. I understand that soon the mission committee here will be announcing a new way that the church will be involved in ministry to troubled youth and also veterans. Listen for that news. Be excited. I know two girls who have been helped by that place. I think it's called uh, Wildwood Hills Ranch. I like coming here because despite my 73 years, despite my 45 years in ministry, I still need more. I come here to worship God. I enjoy the gift of music. I enjoy the prayers. You know, I've known Williams in the pastoral ministry for three generations. Nathan's grandfather, who happened to be a pastor in Atlantic when I first started out in Des Moines on the south side. After I moved to Amity, a country church between Rhinebeck and Traer, Dean had a good wit to uh, go and move to Traer. And for a number of years, he was my pastor's pastor. I was out of the press tray for over 25 years. And uh, Lynn was a pastor in here 
uh, in the presbytery during most of that time. I knew of him. I've been back in the presbytery for over uh, 12 years. I know of Nathan. I've been pastor part of the time to his mom, who's also a lay pastor in a diagonal area. She has retired like me. I like Nathan's informal style. His intellect. The insight he brings. It feeds me. But not only that, the warm fellowship of this church feeds me. You know, I would go back for more and more cookies and more and more coffee, and I could stay here a long time. is that the fact that I find the ministry of Christ, the community of Christ, alive here. That speaks to why we come. Because after all these years, I'm still hungry. Still hungry for what a good church has to feed me. Amen and amen.